All right, my name is Paige Harriman, and this summer I developed a game called Climate Detectives in North Carolina and the Southeast Coast. It is a game of scientific inquiry that teaches children how to think about climate change using innovative problem solving. So in this presentation, I'm going to go over what climate change education for every child means. So what would it look like? Why do we need it? And how it would be implemented? I will actually be talking about two games, Climate Detectives North Carolina and the Southeast Coast and Climate Detectives Open for Business, which I will explain more about. Uh, for future reference, I will refer to one game as North Carolina and the Southeast Coast and the other as Open for Business. So to begin, the big problem surrounding these, the, the reason for this game is simply that we are, as I'm sure many of you are familiar with, in a world that is rapidly changing and getting harder for people to live in. We do not have access to clean water in many of our communities. You know, it is getting hotter and hotter. I'm in Austin and it is currently 107 degrees outside. It's not a very sustainable world. I believe it is too late for us to fix the course we are on and I think instead we have to teach our children how to live in this world. So the purpose of this game is to teach them how to think about climate change and how to solve, you know, how to solve it. So the big ask I have is simply to get the game into more hands of children. It is free. Both games are free to play right now. So I am more interested in looking at and accessing more learners. So as a brief overview, the North Carolina game is a project-based game hosted in Thinkific that shows children different case studies of climate change problems, shows them how they've been solved historically, and then asks them to come up with a solution to a climate change problem that might or might not exist. So that is me and my first official climate detective. Um, Atticus, and we are going over how to make a mechanical cactus to store water. So those are some of the games kids play when they work on this specific game. So I began with a website app, uh, which was turned into a tabletop game because I wanted to reach rural learners. However, I ended up switching to an online game again because I realized I could reach more learners. Um, especially urban ones. I also changed the name from Global Detectives to Climate Detectives. Along the way, I also started a, another Climate Detectives game with uh, Jake and Diane, who are both present on this call. So the desirability of this game and the timing, I think, is really important because there is a huge push to share climate change education. And there's a large desirability from companies that are universities and private companies. So when Jake and I, Diane and I developed uh, the concept for Climate Detective Open for Business, which is an AR game that shows kids how to build sustainably after pandemics, we were immediately offered $3,000 by a professor. It was just a game we were presenting in class. It was just practice. But because the need for climate change education is so widely shared, uh, we were just automatically given money, which I thought was great. So the future roadmap for this game would be starting actually with Open for Business. So after this thesis has concluded, I plan on focusing mainly on Open for Business and then moving on to North Carolina. Because we already have funding for Open for Business, we're allowed to better set precedence. So I can see how long it takes, uh, what resources are needed, what are the key benchmarks we need to reach the number of learners to practice and work with the game. And once we have finished and published that game, we plan as a team to move on to North Carolina. So the feasibility, the existing marketplace for free climate change education is wide open. There are not a lot of climate change education games, period. And the ones that are are more about teaching kids what climate change looks like. And they are more passive. You know, they don't engage in active learning and they don't allow students to really explore and develop on their own. So the existing marketplace is quite large. All of the children who we've tested with have responded very positively and there has been no issue getting funding. So the big ask for me is how to take it to market, you know, how to reach the amount of learners that need to be reached. Um, so the revenue uh, streams are mainly coming from universities. That is historically what has been, you know, the most prominent and the easiest to get. Uh, the second thing we are planning on is to allow people to donate on Kickstarter and other sharing sites to have free access to the game and to help us develop more. 
And hopefully once the game has been developed to a certain level, we can approach companies like Google or IBM and see what they think about buying it. I know that is how a lot of people have sold and produced their games. So as a final note, I just want to remind you guys that uh, gently, this is the biggest crisis humanity has ever faced. It really is. And we only have a short amount of time not to solve it any longer, but to show kids how they can survive it. So if you have any feedback on the best way to reach learners, uh, if you can think of anything um, I might want to keep in mind when sharing it, I would love to hear about it in the breakout room. Thank you so much for listening to my presentation.